will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole lifespan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters in Islam. Welcome back to the inevitable journey. Right before the break, I shared with you how can I introduce that subject to you, which is very heavy on the heart. And I chosen to use Hadith Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, and the Hadith in Sahih al-Imam al-Bukhari wa Muslim. Rahmatullahi alayhim. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَتْبَعُ الْمَيِّتُ ثَلَاثِ فَيَرْجِعُ اثْنَانِ وَيَبْقَى وَاحِدِ The deceased will be followed to the graveyard by three things. Two things will return and one of them will stay with him. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the deceased will be followed by his family members and his friends and he will be followed by his money and wealth presented in his cars his son may be driving his car or the nature of the people following his janazah his wealth will show and his deeds, his actions, will be also following him to the graveyard. Family members, they will return. They will not stay with you. You only can ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they will fulfill the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam regarding burying you quickly and regarding following the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in burying you and regarding giving you some time because the deceased actually feels their company after they finally bury him or her. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as Amr ibn al-As radiallahu an commanded his family members to stay behind because he feels their company but they depart at the end and they leave him and also his wealth would depart and leave him. And the only thing that will stay with you is your deeds, your hasanat, your sayyat, your recitation of the Quran, the salah that you prayed, the zakah that you paid, the fasting that you did, the hajj that you did, the enjoyment of good that you did, the forbidding of evil that you did, being kind and dutiful to your parents, being responsibly acting upon your responsibility towards your family members and your children, being a caller to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being a good mannered person, all of this is what will stay with you. Everything else will leave you alone. They go and they deliver you to the ground. They leave you alone there and they come back. And what will stay with you is your deeds. Let's find out how your deeds will help you through the fitna in the graveyard and throughout your stay in the graveyard. And that is why, brothers and sisters in Islam, I stress this fact and I stress this fact and I stress this fact. We are presenting the inevitable journey to you not to talk about your end, to talk about your beginning. It's time that you start preparing for this day. It's time to prepare some deeds that can help you, inshallah, once you are left alone. Your deeds, brothers and sisters in Islam, will be standing by your head. Hadith Abi Hurairah. And again, I want to stress the fact that anything that we say in this episode, and the episodes to come, because these are issues of unseen, must be supported by evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah, and there anyone speaks of the unseen without an evidence. 
based on the understanding of the eminent scholars of this ummah as well, the account that I'm using is Hadith al-Bara ibn Azib radiyallahu anhuma fi mustadrak al-Hakim, Hadith Abi Hurayra radiyallahu anhu fi Sunan ibn Majah, wa Sunan ibn Hibban, wa Sunan al-Imam al-Nasai rahimahumullah. Those are the two accounts that I'm using in order to talk about the fitna in the graveyard. Brothers and sisters in Islam, when those two angels come to wake the deceased up, for the believer, his salah and his recitation of the Quran will be standing by his head, by his head side. The two angels will approach the deceased from the side of his head. They will say, no, not from here. He used to pray. He used to recite the Quran. Then they will proceed to his right side. Guess who is standing in the right side? His fasting. The fasting will say, not from here. He used to fast. Then they will go to his left side. Who's standing in the left side? His zakah. The zakah will say, not from my side. He used to pay zakah. Then they will go to his feet side where the rest of his deeds are there. The rest of his extras, the ihsan that he performed in joining good, forbidding evil, speaking the truth. All of this will be standing out there by his feet and they will let the two angels know that not from here he used to do all these good deeds. Brothers and sisters in Islam, they will finally call upon the believer to stand up and to wake up. Look at the believer, how he, he will wake up. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the whole scene. Remember, we're talking about that place that you filled with dirt and you left and you went home. This is another world, akhi. Don't judge this world based on your laws here. This is not a fairy tale. This is will happen because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ It is a revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make the whole scene that the sun is about to set. So as soon as they wake the believer up, he's going to look at the sun. You know what he's going to say? Ah, oh, I haven't prayed Asr yet. I want to pray. This is someone who was consumed with the Salah. You see, your deeds. Can you imagine? They are supposed to terrify him, to scare him. And if you wake up and you see those Awful, and I say awful because they were fashioned to be this way, to scare the deceased. And he looks at them and he says, and he looks at the sun and he says, I have not prayed yet. I want to pray Asr. The sun is sitting and I have not prayed Asr. The two angels will tell the deceased, the believer, you will pray, wait, you will pray, wait. Fayantahirana, they will shake him. And then they will ask him, who is your Lord? Who's your Lord? Speak. Who's your Lord? You see, that's how they're going to present it. That is why Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it resemble the fitna of the Dajjal. Hadith Asma that we quoted earlier uh, before the break, Al-Bukhari wa Muslim. Because it's supposed to be deceiving. It's supposed to be intimidating. It's supposed to be scaring, terrifying, horrifying to the deceased. Who's your Lord? With confidence with confidence, brothers and sisters in Islam. The, the deceased will say, Rabbi Allah. You know why? Because he was granted steadfastness by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The question is so easy. Even a first grade would answer this question. If you ask him, who is your Lord? Even a kafir, he will say Allah. وَلَئِنْ سَأَلْتَهُمْ مَنْ خَلَقَهُمْ لَيَقُولُنَّ اللَّهِ It's easy. But only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can grant you that steadfastness 
and you will qualify to receive the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which will entitle you to be steadfast once you're asked these questions if you brought with you to the graveyard deeds you were not consumed in the dunya by your family who already left you by your children who are already left you by the money that you already left behind and that they are dividing it already no you were busy with the deeds my lord is allah what is your deen what is your religion my religion is islam what do you say about the man who was sent to you it is muhammad sallallahu ala muhammad they will ask him this question how did you find out all of this how did you get to this you know what he's going to say? This is uh, the, the narration of Imam al-Hakim, Abu Abdullah, uh, Hadith uh, al-Bara. قَرَأْتُ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ I read the book of Allah, the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I learned it. And I followed it. And I implemented it in my life. And that is why I'm able to answer you in, with that confidence. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delivered me steadfastness yuthabbitu allahu alladhina amanu bil qawl al-thabit fi al-hayat al-dunya wa fi al-akhirah wa yudillu allahu al-zalimin wa yaf'alu allahu ma yasha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant the believer steadfastness in this dunya and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will misguide the wrongdoers brothers and sisters in Islam May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who are granted steadfastness, insha'Allah. We will continue talking about this, the next episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The scale of justice will be broke before man. Now you shall have to explain your whole lifespan.